Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for our first Lunch and Learn of the season. Um, we are excited to have you all here with us today in person and online. Um, I will remind you that this program is being live streamed thanks to the support from our sponsors at WGLT, uh, Bloomington Normals Public Media, and a part of the NPR network. Uh, my name is Michaela Harris. I am the Director of Communications here at the museum, and it is my pleasure to introduce you all to our wonderful uh, direct, uh, Senior Director of Education, Candace Summers, who is going to be telling you about our 29th Annual Cemetery Walk today. So without further ado. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Can everybody hear me, first of all? Okay, excellent. Um, so to give you not just a sneak peek at this year's characters, who we'll be featuring, who the actors will be, but to give you a little bit of information about why we do this event. Um, some of you have probably been to the Cemetery Walk before, whether in person or online, so you may be familiar. But for those who are not or you've never come before, um, this event is a three-way collaboration between the museum, Evergreen Memorial Cemetery, and uh, um, Illinois Voices Theater Echoes. And when we first started in 1995, we had a fourth partner, McLean County Arts Center. And it was a big reason why we all came together because we wanted to combat vandalism at Evergreen Memorial Cemetery which had been a rampant problem throughout most of its history. I can go back through um, the Panagraph archives and find instances of vandalism pretty much since the cemetery was founded in um, the 1830s and 1857. Um, and so we learned about this event called the Cemetery Walk at a museum conference and the staff of the museum at that time brought it back and said, hey, how about using this innovative new program to not only educate the public about our local history, but also to hopefully curb or stop vandalism at Evergreen Memorial Cemetery and thus the Cemetery Walk was born. So for those who aren't familiar, Evergreen Cemetery was originally two cemeteries. So you have Old City to the north and Bloomington Cemetery to the south. Old City Cemetery was founded in the 1830s. It started as a family burial ground of the Kimmler family. Uh, Bloomington did not have a burial ground or a public cemetery at that time. And so people eventually came to the Kimmler family and said, hey, we need a place to bury our loved ones. Can we use your ground here? And they started allowing that. It wasn't until the early 1850s that the city of Bloomington purchased uh, about two acres of land from the Kimmler family to establish City Cemetery. Fast forward to 1857 and Bloomington Cemetery was founded by a man, I kid you not, named Linus Graves. Yes, a man who had the last name Graves founded uh, Bloomington Cemetery. I found a couple cool maps of what was become the cemetery. So you can see right here this land, pretty empty, that would become uh, Evergreen Memorial Cemetery. And you can see that the town has not quite surrounded it yet. Most cemeteries um, in those days were founded outside of the city limits due to superstitions. I mean, we still have superstitions with us about cemeteries to this day, um, that they're spooky places that you don't want to go to them. But also for um, sanitary reasons, a lot of people thought that even after death, dead bodies carried disease and that they could spread to the population. So they would typically put uh, cemeteries outside the city limits. But as you can see in 1874, now the entire city of Bloomington has wrapped itself around the cemetery. And the cemetery is pretty much landlocked by um, Lincoln uh, Street and then the neighborhoods surrounding it. And of course, the uh, old Illinois Central Railroad, which is now Constitution Trail, um, on the other side of the cemetery. It was not a pretty picture in those days um, early on at Evergreen Cemetery. Um, there had been, throughout the years, calls for cleaning up both cemeteries, because both of them, uh, there was no money really for upkeep, um, maintenance of the stones. And so in the early 60s, residents began to petition the city to do something, to do something about the um, unkempt nature of the cemeteries 
and to help preserve and protect the stones. So um, in 1962, they began the progress to merging both cemeteries, City Cemetery and Bloomington Cemetery. And finally, in the spring of 63, those two cemeteries merged. And now um, the city of Bloomington Township manages the cemetery because they have the power to levy taxes. And taxes are used for perpetual upkeep, maintenance of the stones, maintenance of the grounds, mowing, all those things. Um, so what was once overgrown, as you can see here, I mean, these weeds are almost as tall as that monument there. And the men who are in that picture too. Um, this one's hard. I couldn't find the original uh, photo of it, but you can see lots of dead grass everywhere. This is March of 63. Um, once um, the city of Bloomington Township took over, in a matter of months, they began to improve the conditions. And here we have residents of the city of Bloomington and even in Monunk who've come to town to visit loved ones who are praising the early efforts of rejuvenating and restoring that cemetery. But despite the efforts of cleaning up, there was still that rampant problem of vandalism. Um, this one right here is 1954. You can see the train tracks right back in the back there where the Constitution Trail is today. Um, these vandals knocked over about 25 markers overnight and they were never caught. Um, the article in the pantograph, the uh, police chief at that time issued a stern warning to anyone who would dare set foot in the cemetery knocking markers over. Um, a few months later, they actually had a crew out here trying to right the stones. So they actually have a pulley and a winch um, trying to put those back together. And even with four guys, you can imagine how much those granite markers weigh to bring them back upright. Um, in 1971, uh, 25 to 40 stones were tipped over at Evergreen Cemetery. And then the night before, they also visited Park Hill Cemetery. So it's not just an Evergreen Memorial Cemetery problem. It's a problem with all the cemeteries in our region. 1968 and 69, we had damage. Um, this is the soldier section in City Cemetery where they toppled those markers. Um, this one right here, I wasn't, it's towards the center of the cemetery was my best guess where um, the picture was taken. But that instance, over a hundred markers were overturned and just, or destroyed in that instance. Right here, that is Lincoln Street right there. And this is the same spot one year later. 1980, 30 markers damaged. 1981, it looks like the same 30 were toppled again. And it even went in on to the 90s. It didn't, it didn't stop. Um, Lyle Converse, who was a member of the Board of Trustees of Evergreen Memorial Cemetery, um, he was uh, one of the leaders early on who helped get this event started. I mean, without our partner at the cemetery, we wouldn't really have an Evergreen Cemetery walk. Um, and I mean, this, this one hurts me right here, this marker, this statue. I mean, that's something that cannot be repaired. Markers like this, they can be righted and set back up for the most part, but yeah, the statues is another story. Um, and unfortunately, even with our fantastic event, our work is not done. Um, 2015, you may have seen that one in the newspapers where vandals had not only tipped over several stones, but they had etched into the Bloomington vault out there. Now, fortunately for this instance, they caught the people who did that damage, thanks to the power of social media. Apparently, the people were bragging what they had done on social media, and their friends ratted them out. So for all, that, all the ills of social media, this time it actually <laughs> did some good stuff. Um, and then in 2017, vandals uh, hit two markers, um, again, close to the trail. They think that that was just an opportunity where they're walking along the trail, they come in, they spray paint, and then they walked off. Um, this was easily cleaned up, fortunately, so you can't tell that these markers were ever vandalized with spray paint. Um, but this was, these instances is one of the biggest reasons this event happens is we want to help people, particularly young people who attend this event, to understand and appreciate cemeteries as a site and source of history. <clears throat> to respect them, to honor them, 
because it's true, the very people who made our history here in McLean County are buried in Evergreen, in Park Hill, in Eastmont, you know, Lexington Cemetery, all the cemeteries in our area. And it's our job to preserve that and protect it. And particularly students may have never been in a cemetery before. We get school groups that come on the walk in between the two weekends and for some of them, it's the first time they've ever been in a cemetery. And they might be a little scared. They might think somebody's gonna jump out at them like it's Halloween, and that's not, <laughs> that's not this type of event. We don't have anybody jumping out to scare you. Um, but we want young people, all people, to understand why cemeteries exist, what the purpose is, and the people who are buried there. We also want people to identify themselves as members of our community. We have a large community here. We have a lot of people coming and going, uh, a lot of new people coming and settling here. Or in the case of our universities, Wesleyan and ISU, people that are here temporarily, they may not say that or think that they are members of this community. I'm only here four years. What, what difference does that make? I can't make any history while I'm here. And they're wrong. They can make history. They do make history. If you're here for four years, if you're here for 40 years, or you're here even a year, you are contributing to our local history. And we want people to understand the history that's come before them so that they know how we got where we are today. <clears throat> we also want to help people understand that theater and the arts and history can go hand in hand. Without our amazing partner, Illinois Voices Theater, we would not be able to tell these incredible stories the way we do. I mean, we could tell the stories. I can write panograph articles, I can write biographies on our website, but to see them brought to life through theater is just a transformative experience and a way to really engage people and share that story in a unique way. And not just the people we feature, the, the characters that we bring back, but the cemetery itself tells stories too. Um, and so if you've ever taken a walk through Evergreen and just taken a look at the monuments out there, each one of these has a story, more than just the name of the person on the marker, what it's made out of, how it's made, the shape of it, the inscriptions in it, they all tell a story, whether the time period that they were made in, or the person who made them. So the cemetery is equally a part of the show, just as much as our actors who bring those characters to life is. And speaking of our actors, um, we work with a talented group of people. You've probably seen them on Heartland Theater, Play Community Players Theater, Coalescence Theater, or any number of local theaters in our area. And They've really, I think, do justice to the people that we bring back who are buried in Evergreen Cemetery. And so we're thrilled that over the course of 29 years, we featured 208 different people. That doesn't count the years we've brought people back and repeated them, like fan favorite Charles Oldhaus Radburn, our baseball player that is buried there, um, still holds a uh, record that will probably last forever of 59 winning games pitched in one season. It helped that he was the only pitcher on the team at the time. <laughs> um, but many, many more stories from the who's who's of the Adley Stevensons, the Jesse Falls and the David Davises, to the everyday person, like the Lloyd Ayers, the Lucinda Bartons, the Richard Shipleys, the streetcar drivers, the nurses, the midwives, all these people here in McLean County have a story to tell. And we have the privilege to tell that story. So this year, um, who you will be seeing, and they're all on the bookmark um, on the table. And for those viewing at home, you can go to our website, mchistory.org, to access who uh, we're featuring on the walk. But we started in 2020 a new program called a visiting voice to our Evergreen Cemetery Walk. And that is a person we invite, so to speak, from a McLean County cemetery that's not Evergreen Cemetery. We realize that Evergreen is only as diverse as the people who are interred there. And there are more stories held at other cemeteries throughout our community and our county 
than we could ever tell if we stuck just to Evergreen Memorial Cemetery. So we decided to feature a different person every year who's buried at a different McLean County Cemetery, but also that gives us the chance to talk about other cemeteries and their history and how they came to be. So this year's visiting voice is Paul Reimer, um, maybe familiar with the old 30s and 40s radio show Vic and Sade. Um, Paul Reimer was a Bloomington boy, uh, graduated from Bloomington High School, went to Illinois Wesleyan, um, was a bit of a character and a practical joker who liked to uh, spin a tall tale <laughs> in his reporting work that he worked at the Panagraph. Um, Paul went on to uh, work in radio as a script writer and created the show Vic and Sade, among other things. Um, and so we're really excited to tell his story and also share information about Lexington Cemetery, where he is buried this year. And really excited to have John Poling back, um, acting with us again. Um, John Poling uh, could be seen in the 2020 Cemetery Walk as Owen Lee Cheney, among lots of other uh, local stages here, and um, super excited to have him back, and who wrote the script for Paul Reimer. Of course, we'd have a radio man write a script for a radio man, and that is uh, Todd, Todd Weinberner on WJBC. John Jackson Mays, other than having outstanding facial hair, <laughs> I love that glorious beard he has, um, he was an artist with a camera. He was a long time in the photography business. He taught at Illinois Wesleyan for a couple of years to get young people involved in photography, but he also raised and trained racing horses. That was a really big business here in Bloomington, raising and breeding horses. And of course, J.J. Mays jumped on that bandwagon and uh, contributed to that occupation as well. And Kevin Wickert is back again this year. Um, he is a, a favorite of ours to be on the walk. Last year Year he was James Preston Butler, um, and this year he is J.J. Mays, although I don't think he's had time to grow that fabulous beard, though. <laughs> and John Poling wrote the script for J.J. Mays. Ooh. Ooh, too far. Okay. Um, we have a uh, married couple that we're featuring this year. We always try to feature a duet. Sometimes they're business partners, sometimes they are family members. Um, this year we have a husband and wife, Samuel and Mary King, who were an agricultural power couple. I mean, ag is big business, and as we all well know here in McLean County, um, but Samuel and Mary King definitely played their part in the development of agriculture and household sciences here in McLean County. Um, S. Noble King, um, he uh, worked a lot with the University of Illinois College of Agriculture. Uh, as part of Noble, uh, S. Noble King's work with the Illinois Farmers Institute, which was a nationwide organization, he actually helped get money and funds from the state of Illinois to the U of I to build their first building for the School of Ag, Morrow Hall, in 1901. Um, and playing uh, S. Noble King is Nathan Brandon Geick. He is doing the walk for the very first time this year, so we're thrilled to have some new people on the walk. Um, you can probably have seen him on uh, Community Players, Heartland Theater, and also Barn 3 Dinner Theater as well. And Mary King, um, she too was also a force to reckon with. She was an educator by trade, and she also um, taught and led conferences to encourage women to stay up to date on household sciences and bettering their domestic field. And uh, Connie Blick will be playing Mary King this year. Uh, you may remember Connie from the 2020 virtual walk where she played Emily Howard. And the script writer for that is John Bowen. John is also a veteran of the cemetery walk as well. Frances Kessler, um, she had a passion for music and to teaching others about music. Um, you may have heard the Kessler name before. Her sister, Clara Louise, was on the Cemetery Walk back in 2015. But Frances, um, equally in her own right, was a uh, tenured educator in Bloomington Public Schools, the first music appreciation teacher in Bloomington Public Schools, and one of the first in the nation. And she wanted to teach her students to become good listeners, to appreciate music, even if they didn't know how to play a musical instrument. 
Um, she spent 42 years in Bloomington Public Schools teaching students how to be good listeners and appreciators of music. And uh, Nancy Nickerson is portraying Frances Kessler. She is back this year. You may remember her from the 2018 Cemetery Walk where she played uh, Jane Frankenberger Hendricks. Um, so we're super excited to have Nancy with us. And Kristen Monson wrote the script for Frances. Annie Ethel Jones is one of two black individuals we are having on the walk this year. And Annie, um, despite dreaming that she wanted to be a doctor, which her family couldn't afford to put her through medical school, she was able to put herself through, through a correspondence course and become a licensed practical nurse later in her life. And she worked at St. Joseph's Hospital, the McLean County Poor Farm, and also did private nursing care as well. And she was very active in the civil rights movement through the NAACP and her church, Wayman AME, locally too. And uh, Dara Maxine is another newcomer to the walk this year. We're super excited to have Dara. Um, is a graduate of Illinois Wesleyan University's theater program. And uh, Kathleen Kirk, longtime veteran of the Cemetery Walk, wrote the script for Annie Ethel Jones. And finally, uh, Richard Blue. I have to say this is one of the most fascinating stories of the walk this year and, and truly one of the most interesting stories I've come across in my years here at the museum where um, Richard Blue was a black Union soldier for the Civil War from McLean County. And when he came back, he became very active in local politics. Um, he was a champion for promoting uh, civil rights and voting rights for the black community. He uh, attempted to run for third ward alderman um, for the city of Bloomington, unfortunately was defeated by his white opponent. Um, he also was active in promoting literacy among black residents and helped found a literacy group. Um, truly a man who had a passion for um, politics and civil rights and, and making sure um, his fellow citizens had equality. Um, and Gregory Hicks is back again this year. Um, it's been 10 years since Gregory was on the cemetery walk, so we're super excited to have him back again. And the writer for this script was Kristen Monson. Um, and just a few snapshots of rehearsals, which are well underway at Evergreen Cemetery. I hope this beautiful weather keeps up. Please cross your fingers and your toes that we have this gorgeous weather for the walk. Um, and they've been working hard and be uh, using costumes soon too. This definitely not the costumes they'll be wearing. <laughs> um, but none of this would happen without our volunteers. We have between 40 and 50 dedicated volunteers here at the museum that help us do this event each and every year. They give well over 1,000 hours of their time um, to do this event. So everything from the research we do ahead of time on all the characters to helping us write the tour guide scripts because the tour guides are other characters <laughs> that we have on the walk where they lead you from performance to performance um, and give you information to set the scene that you will see but also information about the cemetery or funerary customs as you go along the way. Um, their tour guides, their um, box office volunteers, and they even bake us cookies for all the hungry staffers and volunteers at the event. So without them, this event would never happen every year. So we truly thank our volunteers. And of course, we're always looking for more volunteers. So if you are interested in getting involved in the cemetery walk, even if it's just baking us cookies, because we love cookies, you um, can get more information on our website. And not only do we have the in-person cemetery walk, which is September 30th, October 1st, and 7th and 8th, but um, we also have the virtual walk. We are very fortunate because of our sponsors and our donors and our members that we are once again um, putting on a virtual walk so that anybody, no matter where they are, can view the walk. And doesn't matter what your ability is, there's something for you. So the in-person walk, Dates are the September 30th, October 1st, 7th, and 8th, with tours at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. And the virtual walk will begin um, November 3rd and goes the whole month of November. And you can get tickets for either of them on our website, makehistory.org. 
So I hope that we'll see some of you, whether online or in person, at the walk this year, and I am happy to answer any questions anyone may have. If anyone has questions, I'll bring the microphone around so that our folks at home can hear your wonderful questions. And that's okay if you don't have any questions. I answered them all. <laughs> Two. That was so great. All right. Okay. Well, well, thank you so much, folks, and thank you for tuning in online. Thank you. Our next Lunch and Learn will... Um, be on October, I should know it off the top of my head, I apologize. 12, thank you, at 12.10 um, with Guy Fraker, and we will be discussing um, Abraham Lincoln, one of our favorite topics, so we hope to see you then. Thanks again for joining us.